It's me and welcome back to my channel. So I'm going to be doing and starting a little bit of a series called 10 things to declutter and I'm going to be starting off with 10 things to declutter from my bedroom. That's why I'm in my bedroom today. And I'm also going to be doing 10 things to declutter from your living room, from your bathroom, from your kitchen and from your storage space. So I'm gonna have essentially five different areas that I'm gonna be going through. Start off here in my bedroom and I'm gonna go over 10 different things that you could potentially declutter, 10 things that I've decluttered from my bedroom to make my bedroom just be a place of peace and serenity. I know that having a clean space for me at least has been so instrumental in me having a clear mind and just a relaxing body right before I go to bed. So the first things that I've decluttered from my bedroom is books. Now this is an area that I continue to work on but I've actually received a lot of books from friends and family and so some of that I have kind of learned how to like either gift them or donate them or find other uses for them if I'm not going to be rereading them repeatedly. So some of the books I have right now I got some Tender Melody books from one of my sisters. Grace in the Gray, which I actually just recently bought. And I'm actually planning on giving this to like my sister or some friends to read after I finish. So far, I've actually really enjoyed it. I have Lilac Girls, which I also got. I'm also reading this one as well. It's kind of a little bit slow going so far. I love it. It's a set in World War II. So it's kind of my jam. I do really enjoy some kind of history books. And then Nora Roberts Undercurrents, I actually need to give this back to her sister because I did read this book and actually I got probably like halfway through and I'm like, it's not worth finishing. Like I just couldn't get through it. That is basically one of the things that I've just learned to get rid of. So finding a place, whether it's giving them to another person, whether it's donating them, finding them another home, donating them to like a book library or a library in general, or like a library book sale, finding a place where you aren't keeping all those books and really evaluating, you know, how many of these books are am I actually reading currently? And then the second item that I have gotten rid of out of my bedroom is unused furniture. Now my bedroom isn't huge, but if there's furniture items that I'm just not using, I won't keep them. So I used to have kind of a chair in the corner Corner. I really wasn't using it. Essentially, I just had it there because I was like supposed to like have it there, right? Because that was the recommendation of an interior designer or whatever that said that I should have like some chairs or other furniture in my bedroom. You're not using it, right? If it's going unused, then there's no reason for me to have it. Now, if you have chairs in your bedroom that you actively use and you're reading books in those chairs and you're actively using the furniture that's in there, great, awesome. It brings you value. But for me, this is an area that just has not worked well for me. I feel like like my space just appeared cluttered. The chair was kind of in my way in general and I was not using it. So for me, I decided that I was going to be moving that chair and no longer having it in my bedroom. You could also do this with like extra dressers, end tables, things like that. Like you don't have to have a dresser or an end table in your bedroom. If it, if it doesn't serve you and you're not actively using it, then maybe it's something that you just don't have in your bedroom. Who says you have to have a dresser or an end table in your, in your bedroom? And so really evaluate like why why am I wanting this item in my bedroom? Is it because someone told me that I should? Is it because I feel like I should have it because my friends told me or culture or social media or some influencer told me that I need that item? Like, why? Why do you have it? Because if you're not actively using it and it's not bringing you value, then it's just clutter, right? Third item is jackets, jackets, sweatshirts, things like that. I tend to go a little bit overboard here in this area and I have donated and then also all admittedly repurchased a few things. And so really keeping firm limits with myself in terms of how much I actually need in terms of jackets and stuff. Now I am from Minnesota, so I do need some sweatshirts and jackets, but I don't need 20 of them, right? And so really keeping tabs and making sure that using kind of that one in one out rule, if I am purchasing anything new that I need to get rid of another jacket or sweatshirt. Next item is shoes. Now I've gone a long way in this area. I think I've, I've done a few like shoe videos. So I used to have a lot more shoes and now I've essentially whittled down my shoe collection to like 12 to 15 pairs of shoes and they all fit on my one shoe rack right when I entered the door. And so that's my limit. I don't keep shoes in my closet. I do have like three shoes in downtown storage that are like heavier boots or like winter based shoes that I have downstairs in my like 
winter bin. We have all my shoes in one place. They're right by the door, easy access. And I'm actively wearing all of them because I can see exactly the shoes that I all have. So that's an area that definitely has made my room feel way less cluttered and it's just made made it so much easier for me even to like pick out shoes that match the outfits that i have is socks i've also done videos where i've decluttered kind of old socks socks with holes socks that don't fit socks that are too big too small but I would encourage you all to go through your undergarments, whether that's your socks, your underwear, your bras, and really evaluate how many of those items are you actively using, how many of them are maybe too worn out, wholly, too stretched out, don't fit anymore, and really weed out and determine how many of those items do you really need and actively use. I know for me, I so easily can accumulate socks because not only do I buy them myself, but I also am gifted a lot of socks. I love being gifted socks, don't get me wrong, but sometimes my sock collection gets a little crazy. So I do have to check myself in that area. Next thing is broken items, things that are broken and just aren't working anymore. So an example is um, this, my little sign broke and yeah. So I'm going to be decluttering that. I used to have like a second fan that broke and was no longer in use. I'd had it for years, I had used it, I got good use out of it, but then it was no longer really working. So I ended up getting rid of that item. The next thing is wall decor. So as you can probably tell, I don't have a ton of wall decor, personal preference. I prefer having more wall decor, that's great. But the point is, is that you really want to really evaluate for yourself what's too much and what's too little. You know, maybe you like a stark white wall with no, with nothing at all. Maybe you really, really love having like quirky sayings or fun things on your wall. Great, find what works for you and what brings you value. Don't just do what you think you're supposed to do or like what's trendy or like do what's gonna match with your aesthetic and what you actually like. Keep in mind that also less is more. I think when we are trying to like decorate our walls or decorate our space is we tend to go way overboard and it actually appears way more cluttered when we do that. So I would challenge you, you know, if you are kind of decorating your space, your bedroom, maybe take out two to three items after you've like added everything in and then see where things are at and see if that's too much. Next item is small rugs. So I used to kind of think that like small rugs were cute, but actually the problem with small rugs is you're tripping over them, they're small, they're a pain in the butt to vacuum. And so now I, I actually have, when I moved into this apartment, I have a giant big rug underneath my bed and then it branches out about a foot on each side and then two feet at the end of my bed. It's a braided wool rug. I think I got it from like Rugs USA if they still have it, I'll link it down below. But it's a really great thick, nice braided rug that's neutral, it matches with my space, and I just really, really love it. I also think small rugs just make your space feel like very choppy, and they it, it kind of like interrupts the flow of the room. Like when I immediately come into my room, the first focal point is my bed, my comforter, and my rug. Like that's the first thing I notice when I enter my bedroom, it's the first thing. And I want that to be the first thing that people notice because that is my focal point. That's what I want my focal point to be. And so asking yourself that question can be helpful of like, what's the focal point in my room? And in your bedroom, most of the time, that's probably going to be one of the larger items and one of the items that you use generally speaking all the time in that space. Next thing is clothes that simply do not fit. So I've done a video on some clothes and going through my closet again before, but I have this item, this burgundy workout shirt that is just too large, it doesn't work, I thrifted it, and it's a medium and it's too big and it gets in the way when I work out, so I didn't wear that. I also have another pair of work pants that I wore a lot from originally from Everlane and I actually do really like these, it's just they're a tad bit too small in the waist and I just don't like, like they're not comfortable. My favorite pair of jeans as well that are just too big. They just don't work way too large. I encourage you all, especially in your space, in your bedroom, it's so easy to accumulate so many items in your closet. So going through your closet on a seasonal basis, like four times a year can be really helpful, especially at the end of a season and start of a new season to really go through and weed out what are you wearing? What are you not wearing? What's bringing you value, not bringing you value and what's really fitting and working for you? What items are you actually wearing and what items are you not? 
purses, purses, bags. I've already kind of decluttered a lot of that stuff for the most part, but this is an area that is so easy to accumulate a lot, especially in your closet specifically, or maybe they're even thrown around and laying about in your bedroom. Maybe how many purses, how many bags do I actually need and am I actively using? Now, if you want more than one purse or bag, that's fine. I have more than one. I have a fanny pack, I have my black purse, and then I have one other like more colorful purse that I was gifted that was handmade. So I technically have two purses and one fanny pack. Just kind of my 10 tips of some things that I would declutter and what I've gotten rid of in my bedroom, some things that hopefully that you guys can also use and declutter from your bedrooms as well. If you have any other things that you like have decluttered from your bedroom or that you feel like would be helpful to declutter from your bedroom, comment that down below. I would love to hear from y'all some other items that you guys are decluttering from your spaces or from your bedrooms. Guys, it is a beautiful day to simplify. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you all in the next one. I love you all so much and have a great rest of your week. Bye.